This is a vast wetland. It's actually as big as central Tokyo. This is the type of habitat that the red crown crane actually prefers. The famous red crown crane that used to migrate all over Japan now is confined to this area. Wow, listen to that. That's beautiful. The crane is actually almost like the unofficial national bird of Japan. It's inspired so much poetry, so much literature, so much beautiful art. Wedding kimonos traditionally had this bird on the back of them. The crane, because it lives so long, because it mates for life, um, is a symbol of marital fidelity and long life. What I love about these birds are just the dance, the graceful dances, mm -hmm. and the winds go up, and they just seem to interact so beautifully. Oh, the dancing is so cool. These birds are really performing for us. Look at that one dancing. <laughs> Look at that. That is so beautiful. Okay, I am definitely happy camper right now. <laughs> they are so beautiful when they spread out those wings and just go straight up in the air. Just like artwork. When I was here 15 years ago, I didn't see these numbers. I wonder if they've increased since then. Significantly. Just in the 1920s, there were just a few dozen. They thought they were going to lose them forever. We're up to about 1,000 birds now. This is because of feeding. They've, they've had to feed them. Their habitat has shrunk, and they don't have any food. This is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing in that their numbers have increased, but they don't migrate anymore, which is always bad for the gene pool. There's great fear among the bird conservation societies that one fell swoop from a disease and would wipe the whole flock out. People often think if you leave nature alone, it will take care of itself. People don't realize that nature is itself artificial. These animals are living in vastly reduced habitats and they need help if they're gonna stay healthy and alive.